Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. We're going to read this one verse, which is the golden rule spoken by our Lord Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. And in that verse, he said, Therefore, what things soever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so unto them. Preachers have always preached, teachers have always taught, and Christians have always said that we should live by the golden rule. The question of the hour is, what is the golden rule? And then another question is, are we living up to its standard? I, I do believe that Jesus had a very specific intention when he spoke these words, and it's his desire that we know what he meant. Therefore, listen as I share three things in regards to this standard we as Christians, children of God, are to live by that being the golden rule. And the first thing I want us to see is that the golden rule is an important rule. It is important because it serves as a measuring stick as to how we are to live. In other words, God measures you and I individually. Every one of us, he measures us to see whether or not we come up short with his expectations of, of how we are to live. And I've got news for you. Romans 6.23 says, All of us, not some of us, but all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Matthew 7.12 Therefore, what things soever you would that men should do unto you, do ye even so unto them. The golden rule. The golden rule is mentioned twice in the Gospels. The other place is found in Luke 6.31 where it says, also spoken by Jesus, and what you would that men should do unto you, do you also unto them likewise. Look at the very first word in that verse. It is therefore. It is said that any time you see the word therefore in a verse, you need to find out what it's there for. In this particular case, it is an arrow pointing back to what Jesus had just preached in the Sermon on the Mount. What did he preach? What did he teach? A lot of things. I'm only going to share a few. I'll, I'll share a few that relate to how we are to treat people and how we should expect to be treated in return by people. For example, he said in Matthew 5, 43 and 44, you have heard that it hath been said, love thy neighbor, but hate thine enemy. And then he said, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them which curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. We all have enemies in life, we do. I mean, it might be that someone does not like the color of our skin, or it may be that someone is an enemy to us because they do not like or agree with our political beliefs. It might be that someone is an enemy to us and they don't like us because simply we are a Christian who attends church. You know, a lot of people in the world don't like Christians. And that shouldn't be a surprise because Jesus said in John 15, 18 and 19, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. He said, if you were of the world, the world would love his own, but because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Well, Jesus had enemies. What did he do? Did he hate them in return? Did he hold a grudge? No. Jesus practiced the golden rule. He did unto others as he would want them to do unto him. For Jesus laid down upon the cross and dying for the world. And he tells us, he says, through Paul, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service Romans 12 1 so as he gave his life for us literally he expects us to give our life sacrificially in a spiritual way in service to one another and that includes loving our enemies we would not want someone to hate us well we should not hate others we would not want someone to hold a grudge against us we should not hold a grudge against them and then there's another thing he said in the Sermon on the Mount. He, he said in Matthew 5, 27 and 28, he said, you have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. 
Well, we understand that, certainly. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible sin. And then he said, But I send to you that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his own heart. Now, he is not suggesting or insinuating, not for one second, that adultery in the heart is equal to the actual act of adultery. This is not what he is saying. But what he is saying is that adultery in the heart is a sin. And now, how many of us men would want someone to stare down our wife or our daughter in a very sinful way in lusting after her? We wouldn't, and nor should we then look at other people in that way. And the same thing goes for women. As women behold men, they should not ever, nor he ever, none of us, should ever look upon someone to lust with them in our heart because it is a terrible, terrible sin against God. We should do unto others as we want them to do unto us. And then in Matthew 7, 1, he said, judge not lest you be judged yourself. And many of us take on that role as judges and we think we're better than others sometimes. We'll walk around like the Pharisees with our dignified robes of holiness and thinking that we are holier than other people, and that we don't fall short, that we don't commit sin. Hey, 1 John 1, 8 says, hear it now. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We are a people that are most naive if we think that we do not sin. So therefore, we have no right to judge others. We would not want someone to belittle us, to judge us, to condemn us, to embarrass us, to shame us, to backtalk against us, to drag our name through the mud, and we should not want to do that to anyone else either. We need to practice the golden rule. Therefore, said Jesus in Matthew seven twelve. What things soever you would that men should do unto you, do you even so unto them. It is an important rule because it serves as a measuring stick as to how we are to live. But it's also an important rule because it, God knows when we don't abide by it. He knows if we are not adhering to it. If we're not living by it. He knows if we are not practicing it as the standard bearer for our life. You see, God knows everything. God knows our secrets, our thoughts, our intents, and our motives. Hebrews 4.13 says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest before God, but all things are open, naked and open unto him of whom we have to do. I'll tell you that when David committed sin with Bathsheba, God heard it, God saw it, he knew it, when David put Bathsheba's husband on the forefront of battle so he would die, God saw it, God heard it, he knew it, exactly everything that had taken place. When Peter had denied Jesus three times before the cock crowed, Jesus heard it, he saw it, he knew it. All things are naked and open into the eyes of him of whom we have to do, Hebrews 4.13 again says. And I'll tell you, the Ananias and Sapphira, when they sold some of their land and gave money to the church, it said it was a total sacrifice and they gave it all, but yet they kept some of it back. They lied to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit slew them as a result because God knew it, he heard it, and he saw it. All things are naked and open in the eyes of him of whom we have to do. So the golden rule is important because it's a measuring stick as to how we're to live, and it is important because God knows when we don't do it. It reminds me of a story about a Christian school when some uh, children were in the cafeteria at lunchtime and on one end of the table there were a whole bunch of apples, a big pile of apples, and there was a sign that said, take only one because God is watching. On the other end of the table there was a big pile of cookies and there was a little note that some child had written and put there and said, take as many cookies as you want because God's over there watching the apples. I'm here to say God is watching the apples and the cookies of our life. And he knows if you and I are not 
abiding by and living by the golden rule. He knows. So we need to treat others as we want them to be, treat us. Now the golden rule is an important rule. It is also a universal rule, a universal rule. That means it's for everyone. You see, in, in that Sermon on the Mount, he did not say in Matthew 5, 13, be the salt of the earth to some, but to all. He did not say in Matthew 5, 16, be the light of the world to some, but to all. He did not say in the model prayer, forgive some, but forgive all people. And, and I will tell you that the golden rule, it has a positive and a negative about it. In other words, we can say that the golden rule is treating others the way you'd want them to treat you. That's positive. And then the negative way to word that is don't treat others the way we want them to treat us. Another way to further explain the positive and the negative of the golden rule is this. We can say that in a positive way, if I see someone stranded in their car on the side of the road, maybe they have a flat tire or they've run out of gas, the golden rule would be I should stop and help them, offer to help either to go get them some gas or fix the flat or, or, or to, to change the tire rather, or to uh, make a phone call or do something to help the stranded motorist. Because if I was stranded, I'd want someone to help me. So that's the positive way to look at the golden rule, doing others we'd have them doing us. The negative way would be this. We would not want someone to steal from us or to lie to us. Well then in the same way, we should not steal from them or lie unto them. Now the golden rule, it is an ethical code of morality. It has always been in existence. In fact, the rabbi Hillel, the famous rabbi, Jewish rabbi, during the time when Jesus was on this earth, one time a Gentile, the story said that a Gentile went to the rabbi Hillel and said, can you explain the law? And can you define the law? Can you summarize the law in just the short time that I stand on one leg? Rabbi Hillel responded immediately and said, what is hateful to you, do not do unto others. And he said, that is the whole law, the rest of its commentary, go learn it. All of God's people by creation are to live by the golden rule in a general way. In other words, and what I, what I mean by all of God's people by creation, God created the world. He, he created everyone who lives in the world. But not everyone in the world knows Jesus as Savior. So a, lot, a whole lot of people in the world, unfortunately, are going to die and be lost, and lost in good hell. But just common sense principles is an is a ethic, ethical thing. A principle of morality is what it is. We should all, I mean, and that applies to everyone. Everyone in the world, whether they know Christ or not. So in a general sense, the golden rule should apply to everyone in life. Treat others the way we'd want them to treat us. And then in a spiritual way, in a spiritual sense, the golden rule absolutely, totally, completely, without a doubt, applies to you and I as Christians. We need to live by it. You see, it's a universal rule. And this world would be a whole lot better place if it all lived by the golden rule. Then the third thing I want us to see is that the golden rule is an authoritative rule. Something is authoritative based on who said it. So uh, we could look and say that, or ask did Abraham say the golden rule? Abraham was the revered father of Israel. And his words carried heavy weight, but he didn't say it. What about Moses? Moses, the great leader of Israel that led them across the Red Sea and through the wilderness journeys and received the Ten Commandments from God on, the, on Mount Sinai. The great man Moses, well-respected, but he didn't say it. David, oh, I know he committed that sin with Bathsheba, but he got it right. He prayed and Psalm 51.10, created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. 
In Psalm 51, 12, he said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And, and he did, and he got it right. And, and David was the king of Israel, the revered king of Israel, the respected king of Israel, and the man after God's own heart. If he said something, people would listen, but he didn't say it. So he said it, Jesus said it. And that's enough. If Jesus says something, that's all we need to hear. It says to us in the latter part of that verse, Matthew 7, 12, it says, for this is the law and the prophets. Therefore, what things ever you would that men should do unto you, be also unto them, for this is the law and the prophets. What were the law and the prophets? It was the Bible. He said, we call it the Bible. Well, see, you've got to understand that when Jesus was on this earth, they did not have the New Testament. The gospels were being lived out. The church had not been birthed yet. The Holy Spirit had not come down yet. So the book of Acts had not been written. Paul is not on the scene yet. So he is not having, he hasn't been saved yet. He hadn't had his Damascus Road experience. Uh, he is not uh, uh, writing the epistles. Uh, John had not been arrested and put on the island of Patmos to receive the, the revelation of end times to be able to write the book of Revelation. So we did not have the New Testament. So all they had was the Old Testament. The first five books called the Torah in Hebrew or the Pentateuch in Greek. It is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And then the rest of the Old Testament was called the prophets. So the law and the prophets. So in other words, translating that verse, it says, therefore, what things ever you would that men should do unto you, do you also unto them, for this is the law and the prophets. And, other, and what it's saying is we should abide by and live by that golden rule because it is in the word of God. God's word says it. And God's word is the authority that we live by. It is a, an authoritative rule. Now, it tells us in John 3, or John 1, 1. Let's look at this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Talking about Jesus. Jesus is the word of God. In John 10, 30, said, I am my father, we are one. So he is one with the father. God in three persons, God, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, and the author of this blessed book. He's the word. In John 3, 2, Nicodemus, who had come to find the way to eternal life, and by the way, Jesus showed him that way to eternal life. He said to him in John 3, 2, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. There was a time when religious leaders had told the temple police to arrest Jesus and they didn't and they reported back and said in John 7 46 never man spake like this man when he finished the sermon on the mount was coming down from the mountain it says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 28 and 29 that when he had finished these sayings the people were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes it's an authoritative rule because it came from our Lord Jesus himself. Now, Jesus is the son of God. And as the son of God, then what he says is the final answer. You know, a person can go to a court trial and be convicted by a judge and jury of a crime and be sentenced. And then some slick money-hungry talking lawyer can try to weasel out of it and go to the judge and say, we are going to file an appeal to a higher court. And sometimes people will go to higher authorities, to a higher court. While we live in America where people sometimes even go to the highest court in the land, the United States Supreme Court. There's always a higher power, a higher authority that we try to get the final answer. Well, let me tell you this. In John 5, 22, it says God had committed, committed all judgment unto the Son. So what that tells me, and it tells you, so listen, hear it out. Jesus is the final authority. He is the final answer. When he says something, then it's valid. And Jesus says to us, clearly and distinctly, without a doubt, that we are to treat others the way we want them to treat us, or we're not to treat them the way we would not want them to treat us. 
Therefore, what things soever you would that men should do unto you, do also unto them, for this is the law of the prophets. Matthew 7, 12. We can hear those words, and we can say, Amen. We can hear those words, and we can say, Preach on. We can hear those words, and we can say, I readily agree, and I accept it. But are we really living by the golden rule? Are we really living by the golden rule? Do we really treat others the way we want others to treat us? Are we really not treating others the way we would not want to be treated? God led James to write these words. Be you doers of the word and not hearers only. For those of you who are listening, you have heard a sermon on the golden rule. I have preached it. And let me tell you that when I preach, I'm preaching to myself. If toes are being stepped on, my own are being stepped on at simultaneously at the same time. Because we're all in the same boat sailing the same sea of life. And we all come short of that measuring stick. We all come short of that golden rule, that golden ruler from God. We all come short of it. And we all can and should do better. Can I give you an illustration of the golden rule? Can I share an example, a story? I want to. Listen, I'm going to share with you a true, real story of something that happened. How do I know that it is true and real? Was it in the newspaper? No, you can't believe everything you read in the newspaper. Was it on, uh, on the news, on television, or on one of our news apps on our iPad or computer? No, it, you can't believe all of that, certainly. Is it a book that uh, maybe I, I got at the library or at the bookstore? No, no, you can't always believe everything everybody says. But as I've already so clearly said, Anything in this book we can believe because it's the truth. In John 8, 32, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. So this is the truth. And I'm going to share with you a true story of something that really, really, really did happen one time in life. And it was all, it's a story about a man He's a Jewish man by birth, by nationality, and he is going from Jerusalem to a place called Jericho. Now, it was a, a downhill walk, a journey, and the road would twist and turn. It's through desert land, but there were a lot of rocks and caves where bandits and robbers would hide, thieves, and so most people would travel in caravans. In fact, it was a trade route from Jerusalem to Jericho, and it's about an 18-mile journey. And, and you're going straight downhill, and, and, and they say that you're going at least about a mile, a mile downward from Jerusalem to Jericho. And uh, this man sets out on a journey. Why is he going from Jerusalem to Jericho? We have no clue, no idea. The Bible doesn't tell us, and it's irrelevant. It doesn't really matter, but he was going on this journey. He's walking alone, and so you know that there is a great possibility someone may jump him, right? And that happened. He is walking alone, and somewhere on that journey, there's some thieves and robbers jumped him, and they, they beat him up and left him lying in his own pool of blood to die. Robbed him of everything he had. Now, it just so happened that there's a couple of, three other people actually that are walking alone too, ironically, and one of them is a priest. Now the priest comes and he looks and sees the man laying in his pool of blood, and you would think certainly he would help, certainly he would, right? But no, he passed by on the other side. Now if it was that priest lying there, he would have expected someone to stop and help him, right? Didn't practice the golden rule. And then there's the Levite. Now, the Levites were workers in the temple. They would be like a deacon in our uh, thinking or, or just anyone in church, a Sunday school teacher, a choir member. And he's walking. 
and he sees him, and you think certainly he's, he'd stop and help. He should be a pretty good guy. But no, he sees him laying in that pool of blood, and what did he do? Pass by on the other side, just like the priest did. But if it was him lying there, don't you know he would expect and want someone to help him? He didn't practice the golden rule. A little bit later, there comes a third man. He's a Samaritan. Now, the Samaritans were Jewish people who had, or Israelites who had married people of other nationalities, and they were not fully Jewish, and therefore they and and, and they were people that were or believed in the first five books of the of the Old Testament, the Law and the Prophets, only the Law. The, the law of Moses is what they believed in, and they built their own temple on Mount Gerizim. The Jews hated Samaritans. Jesus loved them. He taught the Samaritan woman one time, so they had to get saved. But Jews hated them, and they hated Jews likewise. And certainly, you think, now, if anyone's not going to stop, it would be him. But he stopped. He stopped, and he, he poured in oil and wine. The oil was to to uh, reduce the pain and the wine was to clean the wound and then he, he put him on his donkey and he carried him to an inn and he told the innkeeper, here's two days of wages of my own money. Do whatever it takes to get this man well. I'll come back and check on him tomorrow. If it costs more money, I'll pay you up on it then. Which one of those is the good Samaritan? I mean, the, which one of those practice the golden rule is the good Samaritan, Right? But that good Samaritan looked beyond the fact that it was a Jewish man that probably hated everything about him. He looked beyond that and he saw a person in need. He practiced the golden rule. He did for that man what he would want people to do for him. That's what we are to do. That's what Christianity is all about. Now, was it really a true story? Was it just a story that Jesus told. I, I did say that it's the truth because everything in the Bible is true. But, and, but, but was it just a parable? Could have been. But it was spoken by the Lord Jesus. And I will tell you that it speaks loudly and clearly to you and to me that what he emphatically, absolutely, completely, without a doubt expects of us is that we live by the golden rule. Thank you for listening and God bless you.